So basically, like as I mentioned, I will talk a little bit about deep learning today, and uh, so just a, a kind of brief overview. So uh, for Joe, you can continue to work on your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, basically, so just so far we we, we look at like different stuffs uh, in kind of uh, computation and. Uh, different like, edge detection, some clustering we talked about last week, and like argon phase, like PCA, and uh, extracting features, save, and so on and so forth. But I if you look at current research, like actually I copied slides like, a couple of years ago, so, but this is ECCV like for 2016, but even like now, I guess, uh, most of the stuffs are actually, you, you see say like, CNN, like, I mean, convolutional neural network, RNN, autoencoders, fully con convolutional network, and so on and so forth. So, of course, you wonder, like, what, what are these things and, like, why are they important? So, um, ba basically, uh, here's a, a few bullet, like, key points for deep learning. Uh, some of these key motivation is, like, you, we want to learn hierarchical representation from data. And also we want to do like end-to-end -end learning. Like um, you will see more like why why we say end-to-end. -end. And uh, basically, you see like this is like a very small set of tools, but it's able to solve many problems and actually lead to like uh, led to rapid uh, progress in many of these computation problems as well. And it's loosely inspired by the brain, uh, so that uh, that we call it neural network, right? Oh, actually, we, we did mention that actually deep learning is basically just neural network, kind of like uh, a sassy name of neural network. And uh, and uh, we, we will just uh, give a quick introduction today, and then uh, uh, if you want to learn more, then we, we, you can take my other class, like next semester, maybe. No, actually, next spring. And uh, uh, so let, let's look at... Uh, First, I guess this is a, a milestone of uh, deep learning that kind of like opened the door like to uh, comparison. So we have this email, image led uh, recognition, I mean, image led classification challenge like, for many years. Like, uh, basically, the problem is that you have images and trying to recognize that with like a thousand classes and um, over a million images. And the outputs, I can have like these several classes. I, uh, I mean, no, I mean, no, I want to say the output, like you can output five top classes uh, from your classifier. And if you hit one of these five, like you, you uh, I mean, um, I mean, if one of your five hit the uh, ground truth, then you consider a uh, correct classification. And, uh, so uh, the big fool is like in year 2012, and before that, like all the approaches are based on kind of uh, shallow network, or I shouldn't say shallow, shallow, shallow model. And um, after 2012, uh, more or less all based on neural networks and, um, uh, and so-called like deep learning nowadays. And for example, in 2010, you, you can see that more or less you, you have like system that you recognize I have this HOG, um, LPP we didn't mention, oh, I forgot whether we mentioned that, like, it's some like, like descriptor, like image descriptor extraction, then more or less you have some operation and then you go for a classifier and you do the classification. And, um, but you see like for 2012, you have Alex Lat and later on like all these uh, basically little networks. And if you look at the, also in terms of like the classification errors and also like the, the depth of the model, like in 2011 and 10, like before that are all shallow uh, models. And in 2012, we have like this deep models like with eight layers of uh, network. And like you see, like there's a big um, improvement like in 2011 to 2012, like since we adopted deep learning or like deep representation. 
Then afterward, we just have like more and more layers. And actually, in 2015, we have Westlad. Uh, you can say that it's more than 100 layers. And the performance is like uh, the error rate is less than you know, 4%. And there's a human reference is actually like about 5%. So in the sense that you, you can claim that like, uh, roughly speaking, like all the machine is doing better than human for this particular task. Um, and besides image recognition, we can have like detection. Uh, we described that also like it's a little bit more challenging. Um, actually, not a little bit. It's quite a bit more challenging. So, for example, this one that uh, you want to also not just um, recognize a key object in the scene, but you want to identify like each of the individual objects and like, maybe put a bounding box for that. And uh, for object detection, also like we have kind of huge improvement since we start using deep learning. Like, uh, this is like before deep neural network, like and, and like since two thousand thirteen, we have deep neural networks, and we have like you see like before that there's a kind of like plateau there like in two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, more or less. You, there's no improvement, but afterward like uh, at least for the Pascal data set, like. We, we are actually getting, um, actually this is 2016, of course, I will have better results afterward. Uh, and um, and we has also like mentioned a cementation problem. Uh, of course, I, uh, deep learning also applied to post estimation and uh, image captioning as well. Like uh, that's the problem that like, if you look at the image, you want to generate tests to describe the image. Um, there's also like you can have like dense image captioning, like you just try to caption like everything that you see like in the image. Um, and uh, we can also have visual question answering. So you have an image there, you have a question like, for example, I have the image like this, who's behind the better, and then I try to answer that question. Um, and uh, there's also like super resolution, like you can also like uh, use uh, some deep neural networks that uh, actually doing much better like than like uh, prior uh, techniques. And uh, there's also like uh, use uh, neural network and deep learning to generate us, like basically they call it like neural uh, style transfer, like you, you have like one image that you have like a style, you transfer the style to that image to generate a new image. Um, and uh, beyond like computer vision, like uh, deep learning also used like in, for example, machine translation, like since 2016, basically, um, if you use like a Google Translate or like Microsoft also have a Translate engine, like all of them, uh, I, I mean, uh, have transformed from like early approaches to like, uh, deep learning approaches and um, also like uh, such as like, speech synthesis and like speech recognition and all these uh, kind of uh, problems now all of them like the state of the art approach are based on neural network and of course like, there's also like reinforcement learning like you can use uh, deep learning for um, kind of to soft like games like video games and uh, and also like alpha go like uh, trying to solve uh, go uh, and that's actually alpha seal that that can uh, uh, beat alpha go and also like beat like early uh, early um, kind of uh, other approach for like chess and and uh, sogi and so on um, so we talk about like lots of these uh, applications so let's look into like some motivation. So again, I first look into the image classification problem again. So um, we, we think of like how, how uh, in the past we mentioned image classification, we cannot handle that like um, as a programming problem. I mean, basically, if you want, I, I want to ask you like, try to classify, let's say like image with an apple or a tomato and so on. Like, by writing a code, there's no obvious way to implement uh, that function, right? So um, um, that's what machine learning like comes to the rescue. 
So we have this uh, data-driven approach. So we're trying to collect data, data set of images and labels, and then trying to use machine learning to train a classifier and then evaluate the classifier with the, a repel set of uh, test uh, images. And um, so uh, let, let's re recall what we have like on the approach. Like we, in the past, we talked about, okay, we will try to extract like image features, like this can be like HOG or like C for like <coughs> other different features. And then like, we train a classifier where we have the features and we have the training labels. We just put the features and the training labels. I should have the pointer coming up. Uh. So we have the, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, we have the features and the training labels and then we train the classifier, right? And doing testing or like evaluation, you have like image coming in and generate the same features and go for the learn classifier to do the prediction. Um, so uh, the, the, the problem here is that like we don't know like what features to use. In particular, if we change the problem, maybe we need to a different set of features. Uh, that is uh, maybe one set of features is better suited for one, one problem and not as uh, good for other problem. So uh, hopefully what we want to do is that we want to learn not just uh, the classifier, but also try to learn uh, the features like using the data. So here comes uh, what we mean by end-to-end. -end. So we have the basic label, just the label and the ch training image. And then we try to like not just train the classifier, but also train the image features, like the way to extract the image features. And, um, and then we have the learn models. And uh, so a testing, we will have these learn features and learn classifier to do the prediction. Right? So basically the deep learning idea is we, we have a kind of like high, hierarchical, like deep multi-layer uh, model of a presentation. You see like we can have like low layer, low level features and then mid level features and so on. So because we have multiple layers, so we call it deep. It's a hierarchical model. Uh, and uh, actually you can visualize that like, for example, in a little network, like uh, the first layer may be like a, a, a lower level like features. As you go into like higher, higher layer, so you have more uh, kind of, um, uh, high level features that with like high level semantic meaning. So for example, like in, for example, layer three here, you can see maybe some faces there and in the lower layer, you can only see like features try to extract in corners and patterns. Um, so uh, and let's revisit like supervised learning uh, that we to get an idea like how this uh, dual lateral actually work. So take supervised learning like as example, uh, we, we have supervised learning is basically it's just, uh, it's trying to have a, basically just like we have a model function. What supervised learning did is simply trying to, uh, I mean the model function there can be parameterized, parameterized by some parameters here, like W let's say, and then like, uh, what supervised learning did is trying to like adjust this W so that we can fit the data. So for some input data X, and hopefully the output will match with your target output like Y here, and uh, or Y hat here. And uh, take image as example, like a very simple image or like simplified image. Let's say I have only have four pixels here, and then I. I can go for a, uh, this is a regression model. Right? So let's say I, I have um, basically this image, I can just factorize that into a column factor. Then I have some weights here for different classes. Let's say I try to classify into a cat or dog or sheep in this case. Then uh, I basically have a matrix that uh, kind of um, just uh, pad all this waste into a matrix here and then have this matrix multiplied by this data in incoming uh, image, virtualized image and add a bias here and get my score here. So maybe I would say 
uh, the high score correspond to the um, uh, more likely that uh, the the in input is a uh, classified into that one. So in this case, classified to be a dog. Let's say. Um, so, and, uh, and, and, and to, to go back to the model here, so one thing I want to mention is uh, what we want typically, we want to add a regularization uh, term here. Uh, the, the, the objective, as you can see, of course, I want to minimize the uh, the uh, error of the prediction from your ground truth there. So we have we will have a loss function. Basically, it can be this loss function can be just the mean square error, let's say. And also, like typically, of course, we want to minimize that. So it will be some of all the training input there, like for all the input like x i uh, and the target label y i. We want to uh, kind of minimize the average. Uh, some of the uh, the mean losses here, and, and uh, also like as I mentioned, this regularization term is basically trying to like uh, penalize the compass model. We want to uh, minimize the cover like, at the same time, like reduce the complexity of the model as much as possible. Uh, but basically, the Occam razor, right? if you heard of that term, it's like. Uh, you want to explain stuff, but uh, use the simplest uh, reasoning there, and um, and this is a basically a linear regression model. So uh, here repeating like the linear regression model in a more uh, kind of uh, precise way, I would say. Uh, so let's say I, I my input like with a dimension like d in my output like d out here, and again like. I have the linear regression is basically multiplied by this uh, weight here. So and then I, I have this loss function in this case. Let's say as I mentioned, just use a uh, square difference, and uh, I have a regularizer here. Can be just a Frobenius norm. In that case, it's just like the major sum of all the square uh, entries of the matrix. Uh, then I will have the learn problem is trying to minimize this guy here, right? so that that's the basically the stuffs we want to do. So this is for linear regressor. Uh, the uh, and that's that's basically what we have earlier, right? So now let's say if I want to have a little network, um, more precisely, if I want to have a multi-layer little network, let's say I have two layers. What I can do is say first I have a first layer weight can be W1 here. Uh, then I have another layer weight like W2. Then I will have the output will be like X multiplied by W1 and then W multiplied by W2. Right? Uh, so, the part, um, so the issue here is like we, we do not actually get a better or like more uh, useful model here because like we we have like we can simply write w two multi multiplied by w one as w, then it's still like a linear regression model. Right? So that's why like you see like the nonlinearity like in the neural network is so important. So what we can do is that we can insert a nonlinearity uh, operation just after the first layer. So instead of like w two multiplied by w one multiplied by x, I can have like First multiply by W1, then we go through this linearity mapping, like sigma, and then like multiply by W2. So this nonlinearity, like we, we can have like other value here, or like sigma um, as uh, linearity. In, in particular, value is uh, actually very popular uh, in today's uh, neural network. And, um, and then we have like a Two layer models, so uh, and this is a much more powerful model than a linear regression model. So to visualize this, we have this way. Right? Basically, we have like input layer here, have one weight here w. I mean, go for one weight here. Then we have a hidden layer h one, and then another weight here. The output here is another hidden layer h two here. So in the sense, you can think of this hidden layer h one and h two is actually. 
uh, learn feature representations of the input also. Um, and then the question is, say, okay, we have this uh, neural network idea, say, how we are able to train it. So we, we have the very key objective, right? Given some input and output, what we want to do is basically to minimize this uh, weights here. I'm sorry, let me minimize the objective function here. Mm. Minimize this objective function here. Uh, such that like the uh, your target uh, your predicted uh, output will be like close to the your your target output, and uh, at, at the same time you have the this regularization term just to make sure that the model won't be too complex. So, but anyway, like I can just call this whole thing as a function of w. It's basically just an optimization problem where we want to like uh, minimize uh, gw with respect to this w here. And uh, so, that of course, uh, that, uh, if we can find a closed form solution, it would be great, but apparently there would be no such, no obvious way to do that. Uh, okay, random search is, ex uh, okay, like both for search would be extremely silly, right? A, a reasonable way, if you assume that like GW is reasonably well behaved in the sense that it's reasonably, reasonably smooth, and have gradient defined or like subgradient defined like almost everywhere. Then uh, you can just like try to go down here. Then you can just try the uh, gradient design approach way. Right? Basically, it's just like you find the slope of your current point there. Then you're just trying to go down here and repeat the step there. So then just a review of like what what we mean by the gradient. So if you have a, a single uh, kind of a single, uh, I mean, a scalar function here, or like the function uh, with argument of like single variable, then uh, the gradient is basically just the derivative, right? So, we, and uh, when we have like multivariable calculus or multivariable function, then uh, your slope will be extended into a gradient. Basically, it's like a vector with each of the component is password derivative with respect to like each component uh, of the variable. Um, and uh, so we want to just basically find this thing, find this uh, gradient here. And, and then the simplest like gradient design, uh, I mean the most naive approach, most naive um, algorithm will be simply, okay, after we find the gradient, then we have the gradient design, so we have the W here. So we kind of go downhill along that direction with some tiny alpha here. So alpha will be like this learning weight here. It's, if it's too big, it, it, it will have them, you, you will have get into some um, stab, stability issues there. Uh, if it's too small, then it, like the learning, um, I mean, it will take lots, uh, lots of iteration to learn uh, well. So, but anyway, um, that's something that you need to adjust uh, in practice, basically. And, and uh, of course, we didn't explain like, how to find the gradient yet. Of course, you can really compute it. Um, for a simple case, you can really compute it by hand, but uh, as the letter become like really complicated, like with like hundreds of layers, like that would become like impossible. Right? So. Typically, what we need is a so-called dispatch publication algorithm. We'll get into that like, uh, immediately afterward. Um, so, uh, yeah. And this is uh, just an illustration that uh, some variation of this uh, gradient design algorithm. So, uh, this SGD is basically like the, uh, the classical like stochastic gradient design. You have other approaches like that. Uh, other variation that can potentially um, converge to the uh, minimum like more quickly. So, uh, for example, like oh, here actually it didn't show Adam. Adam is like the ADAM is like probably the uh, most popular approaches if you uh, you are working in this area now. And. Um, so now let's look at like how we are going to compute this gradient. Like, uh, 
uh, using so-called back propagation. So as I mentioned, I, uh, if you have a simple problem here, so let's say I have this cost function here, eventually GW, I, I want to minimize the this cost function with respect to weight W here. So we, we're supposed to find this gradient GW here. So at, um, it, it's kind of solvable. Uh, it's not easy, but it's solvable. But if you have like multi-layer lateral like this, then very quickly like, it becomes not quite solvable. Like, if you want to find uh, with respect to W1, W2, and W3, and so on, it, it just become like not exactly loss of a but it's uh, very tedious. So then uh, the idea comes is I have this back propagation algorithm. It actually has been invented and reinvented like for many, many times, like maybe since the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and so on. Like 60s probably in the in the domain of control, like people in like machine learning or little larger thing realize that, but 70s, like people like start uh, to look into that, but it's still not popularized. Then uh, in the 80s, uh, for example, Hinton, uh, Lacoon, uh, uh, start looking into that again and reinvented the idea and uh, um, really popularized the whole uh, thing. But after all, like, back propagation is actually something very simple. Maybe it, it can date back like, even like, uh, much earlier because the idea is really uh, just um, uh, the um, what 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 do we call the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh I forgot the the name you call it in calculus. Uh, what what do you call? So <laughs> what do you call? Uh, train rule. Yes, I I want to say train rule. Yes. Uh, it's basically just train rule calculus, right? So something like if you you are trying to take a um, a partial derivative of like function of f of g of x with respect to x, then it's basically just partial derivative of f with respect to g, and then partial derivative of g with back to x, something like that. So you can just, it, of course, if you have like more layers, then you will just have like a product of like more of this partial derivative there. So th th this become very obvious uh, if you uh, put everything into something long as a computational graph. For example, I have a simple function here, fx, y, c is equal to x plus y plus uh, multiplied by z. Uh, I can construct a computational graph like this. So like I have x plus y, I have a simple op operation plus here. I'll put uh, this, this get me some output like minus two plus five is equal to three here. And then multiply by this c here and get this one. Um, now, if I want to compute the, let's say the partial derivative of f with respect to everything, like with respect to x, y, and z, uh, I, I can do it like, kind of like uh, uh, one layer at a time, or like we can do it first, say, let's say find partial derivative of f with respect to c, that is simple, like it's just equal to like x plus y, right? And then I can compute like partial derivative of f with respect to q, that will be, uh, Okay, so x, x plus y is basically q, so it's basically it's just c, right? So then, let's, let me write it down. Partial p with, let's say, with respect to x will be basically partial derivative of f with respect to q, and then partial derivative of q with respect to x. And, uh, and this, is basically the local derivative of this op operation here, this multiplication operation here. Uh, this basically is just equal to c here for the partial derivative of f with respect to q is just c, and partial derivative of q with respect to x is just equal to 
one here. So this is a, a really simple example here, but you you can see like this, this you can generalize this idea very easily. So let's say I start with something really dummy like puzzle with 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 respect to itself. Then I have one here. Then I propagate like I propagate. If I need to go back to this guy here, I first I uh, try to find the local derivative of this operator uh, of output of this operator with respect to the input uh, that would be like partial derivative of f with respect to c and multiply with the the propagate back derivative that's one here that's why we call it back propagation so therefore like this guy so for this guy here like of course i propagate his just one so like one multiplied by so in this case, dummy, like we have like parcel f, parcel c is just equal to 1 multiplied by parcel f, parcel c, something like that. And, and for this guy, I have like 1, or like parcel f, parcel q is like parcel f, parcel q is equal to parcel f, parcel q times 1. So, but this guy that like you have, you already compute this guy here, like uh, you, you know now parcel f, parcel q, right? And uh, now I want to, if I want to find this, the parcel, parcel f, parcel y, then this is basically parcel f, parcel q, multiplied by parcel, oh, I cannot write, parcel q, parcel y, right? And um, parcel q, parcel y is basically like, the local derivative of this operator, the output of this operator refers back to input y here. So that is basically just equal to 1. And this is propagated back like earlier, right? So I just multiply by this guy, then I get partial derivative of this thing here. So that's why I'm saying like this is just train rule basically. So, uh, in, in the sense what we're doing again like, is just we keep propagating like gradient uh, in later layers and whenever I go through a operator so we just try to com compute the partial derivative of the output with respect to the path that we want to pass through like for example I want to pass through to here like I compute the partial derivative of like this C that's the output of f with respect to x, and then multiply by this gradient here, and then I pass this back, uh, and then I have like that the gradient of I mean the partial derivative of l with respect to x. Then we we'll can continue to pass this gradient like to uh, earlier layers. So um, this is just an other example that I I. I won't go for that. So again, I, you basically can do the same thing, right? Uh, so actually, the what when you have a um, when when you use back propagation to compute the uh, derivative, uh, you basically will compute derivative like with respect to everything in the graph. And first, we will first I like, have the input there. Then you go for a forward step. Then you compute output like uh, for each of the uh, operators, uh, and then I like, after this forward pass, uh, and at the same time actually when you compute the forward pass, you can also compute the partial derivative of the computer output with respect to all the inputs, right? And then afterward, as I mentioned, like you start from the at the very end, then you have this. Parcel F, parcel F is basically one. You can now with this uh, multiply by the local derivative to get the uh, parcel derivative for this guy and continue to do that like, as you go uh, like, uh, to early layers and so on. Uh, one thing I want to mention also, like when you construct this computational graph, uh, there's no reason like, like here we, we kind of split the operator into really small, like we, we, we have this 
this operation here uh, this operation here as you can see this I, I get uh, this one here is basically w0 x0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 here basically this is this guy here then I first multiply by minus 1 and then do exponential plus 1 and then do a 1x operation but you, you can also realize that like this whole operation here like this several operation here is just a sigmoid function right so we can also replace by a sigmoid function there uh, and uh, in that sense like, you, you can uh, skip this like you propagate like, one at a time or we can just directly uh, from here jump to here as long as we know how to compute the derivative of the similar function of course we know how to do that um, so now we, we know how to do pipe propagation then as I mentioned like, to train the model uh, we, we just uh, if we put everything together what we have is that we have some input and then we have some uh, target label and then for the input like you uh, have this lateral model like written as a computational graph that you go through the lateral have some uh, output there like maybe called y tutor and then y tutor and y you get some loss function right? then you can back pop back the puzzle the, the basically the gradient with respect to W1 and W2 and uh, and uh, and then uh, of course then you can do the gradient descent to uh, update your W1 and W2 and so on there are uh, of course uh, nowadays there are many uh, packages uh, for you to construct uh, the allele electron models that uh, you, you don't necessarily do it from scratch and actually is you're not supposed to do it from scratch right for bigger model so uh, for example they like, have very famous like, uh, packages is like the framework is like the tensorflow and uh, there's of course like other packages for example PyTorch and so on uh, and uh, but uh, for simple lateral of course you can implement it very easily from scratch as well this is uh, an example like for two layer laterals uh, just say uh, 25 lines of like Python codes so we have like here is like the uh, this oops uh, let's see if I can just erase this line here first uh, yeah so he, here is just a two, two layer lattice here like with weight like w1 and w2 so we have the input size here let's see uh, yeah the size is specified here um, N should be like the, yeah yeah and is the input size like D is the lumping of data set I guess and uh, and we have a kind of like simple model here as you can see like we have generate some random input like uh, like with uh, uh, just such a sort sort of input here and. Uh, so with the so we have also like y will be the uh, target right so we're trying to like train the x to basically like train the model like to simulate this like sine function so the forward pass we have the lateral here so we have like go for w and this is like basically just a matrix multiplication like so i have x multiplied by x1 so i have s here then this is a while loop operation here and then I go for another layer so we have like W and W two layers here and then the loss here we would just like with the target Y and then say I estimate the Y and then it is a, just a square loss here and uh, 
And, and then like here we can compute the gradient. So gradient is here, the gradient for W, W1 and W2 is computed here. Then learning, it will be just like update the weight. Like as we mentioned, we have a simple gradient descent. Uh, so if you, so if you want this, you can like the training loss will decrease like this, like after like maybe a thousand iterations. So um, I guess I, this, this is an overview of like neural networks and kind of deep learning. So one thing I also like to just quickly mention, maybe I will elaborate more is like, uh, CNN, uh, like we'll elaborate more next time. So uh, basically a convolutional neural network is, um, what, what, we, uh, what you see like earlier, the two models are all like this kind of fully connected uh, layer in the network. So you have this input multiplied by matrix W and uh, W is a dense matrix in general. So we have this uh, convolutional neural network uh, that used a lot in machine learning, also in like computer vision. Basically the idea is like, uh, it's just similar in what we have like in a, uh, in a uh, kind of like a convolution operation in image processing. So we, we, we have like filter in, in image processing and computation. Those filters are usually fixed, right? So the only difference here is like in, uh, we, ask, we, we don't fix the filters here. We assume the filters can also be trained. So therefore, for example, like I have a filter here. Uh, it's just a, um, a input image like with like a 32 by 32 by 3. It's just a 32 by 32 like image with like, a, like maybe RGB, like a color image with uh, three color components. So I can have a filter like this, like five by five by three. So <coughs> this filter will be like spatially invariant. So you, uh, this, the con, I mean, the values of this filter will be the same like in when you apply the area in this image. So then to apply this filter is just doing a dot pole that you can think of. Like you take a patch of this image, like five by five by three, and to do a top part to this image, uh, to do this filter, and then shift to a different patch, uh, shift to a lo different location, and extract another patch of like five by five, five by five by three, and then like do another top operation and so on. So then each time you have like one number, where if you go for the entire image, basically you have a uh, output that is a 28 by 28 by 1, something like that. And you can have like multiple filters, then you have like many, many filters and so on. Like for example, I can have like six filters, then you have uh, start with like 32 by 30 by 3, a volume of data. So after these six filters, you can have like 28 by 28 by 6. So we can have multiple layers, right? After this, we can go for like also like a linear operation like world loop and then like uh, ha can have another set of filters, maybe five by five by, this time say like, because the, the width of the, or like the thickness of this uh, data is like, we have like six layer now. So the filters will be five by five by six. So, and then again, we can convert with that and then go for a value and, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a kind of um, just a, an example, like for example, this Google Lat here. Uh, have, um, yeah, we may go into that, like, I don't know, maybe next time. So, uh, um, with uh, each of these blocks, is like one of these conf layer, uh, and, uh, and also this uh, uh, non nonlinearity, like, uh, activation layer. And this is another like, uh, uh, okay, this is basically like a, a zoom in of like one of these blocks here. This is, uh, they call it inception module. They have this different kind of convolution like combination. And then they, then they just concatenate the output together. 
Um, so, uh, okay, I guess I, that, that's what I like to more or less say a quick uh, go full of this uh, new lateral and deep learning things. Uh, finally, I just want to pull this uh, kind of hype cycle like from Gartner, uh, Gartner.com, and uh, it's like 2018 like emerging technology. Uh, that uh, <laughs> so um, I guess I deep learning ASAC is uh somewhere here like people expect like in two to five years. Uh, AI stuff is not. Uh, there's some AI stuff. Uh, even some blockchain stuff. Uh, couple years earlier, like actually, like deep learning somewhere. Now it's like mostly like deep learning like on ASIC. Like people are actually get all used to. Okay, that's here. Like deep learning is at the peak. Like kind of like peak of the hype. Basically, they expect it to decline. So uh, and uh, I, I um plateau which in like two to five years. Yeah, that, that's their prediction basically. So, okay, anyway, I, I'll just stop here. So I guess, uh, this again, like if, if you are kind of interested, like we will talk probably one more class, like uh, first day uh, on this. Uh, and, uh, I, I actually, honestly, I, I'm not sure we should have one more class on this, or like we, we should just say uh, have this like the end of the semester. But I, I will stay until the like, first day anyway because uh, uh, I uh, um, I uh, yeah I, I still have class like for yeah. So, uh, but yeah, if you you are interested, like we. we you can also yeah.